Hi everybody, welcome to this next biology video. This corresponds with chapter 13, section 1 and 13, section 2. And this video is the introductory video for our study of ecology. Now we know from our introductory biology unit that ecology is the study of interactions in ecosystems. And I chose this photo to start us off here because there's a lot of questions that you can ask about this photograph. Of course, there are two distinct organisms in this photograph, and there are also non-living parts of the environment that are in this photograph. So the first thing you see is probably the flower, and then the second thing you see is actually that nicely camouflaged uh, crab spider. So you can ask all kinds of questions like, why is the spider on the flower? Why is the spider the white color? Well, you might think that the spider is the white color because it's trying to blend in with the petals of the flower, and I think you would be right on that. Um, but why is the spider on the flower, and what is it doing? Uh, it could be eating, uh, in which case it would want to blend in while it's eating. Um, but spiders are predators, so it's not eating pollen or nectar or a part of the plant. It's actually on the lookout for another organism, another animal, to actually catch and eat as, as its prey. So chances are it's hiding out on this flower, um, waiting for some kind of prey to come along, um, in which case it will grab it uh, and have a meal. So um, that is the spider's ecology. You already know from this photograph a lot about what this spider does in its lifetime, uh, what its day is like. It's, it spends its days uh, sitting on the tops of flowers, uh, waiting for its prey to come. So you already know a lot um, about this uh, animal here just by analyzing the photograph. But let's go ahead and get started with uh, the rest of our video. So again, the definition of ecology is the study of interactions among living things and between living things and their surroundings. Remember, living things can certainly interact with each other. For example, the flower species and the spider species here in our photograph. But remember, uh, both of these organisms are interacting with non-living parts of their surroundings. The, the air, the temperature of the air, the, the, what's in the air. Uh, the plant is rooted in the ground, uh, so its roots are trying to get water. Um, so again, non-living parts of the environment uh, play a very important role. So again, ecology is not just interactions between organisms, uh, but also between organisms and the non-living parts of their environment. So ecologists who study ecology can study environments uh, at different levels, or different levels of organization. So in this example here that you can see, this is a wetland of some kind, and there are lots of organisms, and there are also lots of parts of this environment that are not living, for example, the water or the air. Um, but ecologists can study this whole ecosystem at a variety of levels. Um, one ecologist might be interested in just one kind of organism, for example, just the blue heron, or just the turtle, or maybe just the alligator. So that ecologist would be studying just what that in individual species is doing in the habitat or in the environment. But you can also study uh, populations of organisms. And a population is simply a group of the same species. So if there were a number of alligators in this environment, somebody who was studying the alligator population would be concerned not with just one alligator, but with all the alligators that are in that ecosystem. So again, that's a population. And ecologists can also study uh, communities. A community is a group of different species that all live in one area or all live in one environment. So again, uh, the different species could be, for this example here, the, the alligator, the offspray, the blue heron, uh, the turtle, the fish that are probably in the water, um, but also the vegetation, the mangrove trees, the, the salt marsh grass that's also here. So don't forget about the plants as well. That would be the, the ecosystem community. And if ecologists had a question regarding the community, they'd have to think about all types of the organisms that make up uh, that community. And of course, the final level is to simply look at the entire ecosystem itself. That's a very complex thing to do. But it contains all the living things and all the non-living things, too. Um, remember, ecologists just, just aren't concerned with the animals or the plants or the bacteria or the fungi or whatever organisms are there. They're also concerned about the non-living parts of the environment. In this case, it's the water, what's dissolved in that water, um, the air, the temperature of that air. All those things uh, come into play to govern what goes on in this ecosystem. Judging from the fact that there's an alligator here, um, this looks like a, a salt marsh that would be like in uh, southern Florida or something like that. So chances are the air temperature is probably pretty warm, the water temperature is probably pretty warm, and that's going to govern how this ecosystem actually functions. It's going to be a lot different than a wetland that you would find, for example, um, in Vermont. 
So how do ecologists study ecosystems? The terribly complex thing to do, um, but most often they start with observations. Um, these guys here are undoubtedly um, in a field uh, watching something. Uh, maybe they're watching this osprey here, and maybe they're doing it because they're really watching the osprey nest. Maybe they have questions to answer like, um, how many chicks are in the nest? Um, are both the parents coming to and from the nest carrying food or nest materials? Um, not really, really sure what their exact questions are, but um, they're sitting around or standing around here, uh, this guy with his monocular scope and the other guy with his binocular scopes, um, trying to get, gather information, gather some kind of data. How often are the parents flying to and from the nest? Or how long do they spend away from the nest? So answering questions and gathering data like that. But ecologists can also work with field experiments. Oftentimes, the experiments are actually going on out in the field or out in the natural environment. But they can also take place in a lab or a greenhouse or something like that. This individual here is, uh, at least it looks like he's trying to mimic some pond-like ecosystem. And he has replications of that pond-like ecosystem. And it's outdoors, uh, exposed to the kind of uh, non-living factors that a, a pond would be exposed to, um, like sunlight and things like that, and rainfall, uh, that it would naturally be exposed to in its natural environment. And he probably has some questions like, you know, how do certain organisms survive in this environment, or, or how do they, they interact. Um, so ecologists can also do field experiments. And one of the most interesting ways that ecologists uh, study ecosystems now that we have a lot of technology is through ecological modeling. And this takes computers and some pretty sophisticated technology, such as uh, satellite imagery or GPS technology. Um, this is an example of some scientists who are tracking whale sharks, uh, the largest fish in the world, um, with GPS trackers. And they, they're trying to answer questions probably related to where do these sharks go? Where do they spend their day? Um, do, they, do they migrate to certain places every year? Or do they spend their time uh, up near the surface of the water? Or do they spend time deeper in the water? So all kinds of questions can be uh, answered with uh, this kind of technology. So this is um, actually one of the most interesting ways that um, ecologists can study large organisms, for example, or even organisms that move a lot or organisms that live in very large habitats, for example, the ocean. Um, you can actually track these organisms and, and, and gather some data that will help you answer questions about how they live and how they interact with other parts of their ecosystem. And so we've come to our first ecological principle uh, for this unit, and that is that every ecosystem includes both living and non-living factors. And we've already talked about that uh, a little bit. We've talked about some of those living and non-living factors. But let's uh, take this example uh, to highlight some of those to make sure that you understand the difference. Um, I also have a couple new vocabulary terms to teach you here as well. The first here is that all living things in the ecosystem are called biotic factors. And the prefix bio refers to living, just like biology. So biotic factors are all the living things in the ecosystem and if you look at this mangrove ecosystem here um, the living things are the fish and there are a few different species that I can see here uh, of course the mangrove tree um, there's probably some algae and some other seaweed that's you know growing uh, here in the ecosystem um, and any other kind of organisms that might be here there's undoubtedly some bacteria growing in the water there's probably some other plant species growing along with the mangrove so all the living things in this ecosystem are called the biotic factors and the next term I want to teach you here is that the non-living factors are called abiotic factors, things that are not living. So in this example, and in most ecosystems, you're dealing with water, which of course is not living. Um, the air, obviously made of gases that organisms are probably breathing, um, also not living. Um, and the temperature of the water and the air. So the composition of the water and the air, but also the temperature of that water and the air is going to affect how things interact in the ecosystem. In this case, uh, the mangrove is uh, on the edge uh, of the continent in the ocean. So uh, you're going to get salinity. So these organisms are swimming around in salt water. Um, and you're also going to get uh, some nutrients in this water as well, most importantly, oxygen. So these fish are breathing the oxygen that are in the water. So again, oxygen is just a compound, a molecule. It is not living. Um, but it certainly is a non-living factor uh, for this ecosystem that's going to govern what goes on in this ecosystem. So again, living things are biotic factors. Non-living things are abiotic factors. One thing that people who study ecology know really well is that 
changes in one factor, whether it's biotic or abiotic, can affect many other factors. Uh, and I want to consider this coral reef ecosystem here just for a minute. Um, on the left-hand side, you can see a thriving ecosystem here. Lots of species of fish, lots of species of coral, lots of species of anemones and other invertebrates or anything else that's living in this ecosystem. Um, but as climate change happens on Earth, some of our ocean water temperatures are actually changing a little bit. Um, and so just by changing the temperature of the water a little bit, uh, the coral uh, die and they look like something like in the photograph on the right hand side of your screen and so once the coral dies out that's not the base of the food chain but it's an important part of the food chain and the ecosystem uh, that is the coral reef ecosystem and so as the coral dies out the fish species leave the other species of animals uh, and organisms that are there are, are going to leave and so you get a breakdown of this ecosystem and it all started with the fact that the water temperature was just fluctuating just just one or two degrees um, and that made the coral die off and made the ecosystem start to fall apart so again ecologists know that Changes in one factor often have a ripple effect um, and even a magnifying effect um, throughout the ecosystem, even in a short period of time. So let's summarize uh, what I hope that you've learned uh, in this video. The first thing is that ecology is the study of relationships in an ecosystem. Sometimes these relationships are pretty simple, but sometimes they're pretty complex. And it takes a lot of scientists and a lot of people to experiment, observe, and gather data to actually understand these relationships. Ecology, of course, can be studied at different levels depending on what kind of data and answers to questions you're trying to achieve. So you can study just the organism, you can study a population of a single kind of organism, you can study the community, which again is all the species in the ecosystem, or you can study the entire ecosystem itself, which includes the living and non-living parts of the ecosystem. Uh, and we talked briefly about how ecologists study through observation, experimentation, uh, and most interestingly, through modeling, uh, like those individuals who are tagging those whale sharks, tracking them through the Pacific Ocean. Hopefully, also you've learned that biotic factors are living things in the ecosystem, and that abiotic factors are the non-living things in an ecosystem. And finally, I hope you realize that changes in one factor in an ecosystem can drastically affect other factors in an ecosystem, and even start the breakdown of that ecosystem or maybe even the complete breakdown of that ecosystem to the point where it's not even an ecosystem at all. So there's our summary, and there's our video for uh, chapter 13.1 and 13.2, and I'll see you in the next video.